Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Total War Rome 2 here today on the channel. We're back on Divide et Impera, back on the Alexander the Great campaign. This is episode 3. Here today, we're going to be continuing our expansion into Asia Minor and hopefully mopping up some more Persians here today. We're starting off exactly where we left the last episode off. We have 7,000 Greeks just north of Pergamon on here and we're coming up against 8,000 Persians. Let's fight this one on the battlefield here today and uh, get stuck into it. So first up guys, got to apologize that uh, there's been a bit of a delay between the second and the third episode and I'm sorry for that. Uh, basically I had a lot of university coursework that coincided with the release of this mod and I, it just took up too much time and, and I apologize that there's been a delay between uploads and I was already halfway through the Jerusalem campaign when it happened so I was easy just to quickly finish and wrap that campaign up, campaign up before coming back to this one so we're back on the Alexander the Great mod so leave a like if you haven't already, subscribe if you're new around here. So having the delay between episodes, it's actually allowed me to read and go through the feedback for this campaign and getting a lot of opinions from you guys as well when you've been playing it. Apparently, you guys have been struggling. Apparently, this campaign is rather hard. Uh, some people have been wiped out by the hordes of Persia. I believe Jackie Fish has basically lost his campaign. I did go watch a couple of episodes. He was just curious to see where he was in it. There's also been a, I think there's been an update to this mod which makes things a little bit easier as well. But people are getting spammed by doom stacks I've been reading in the comments from uh, Persia. So I think the best way for this campaign forward is to liberate territories where we can. I think like in Jackie Fish's campaign, he just got ganged up on too much. Fortunately enough for me, I was able to take Thrace uh, quite quickly and secure myself before Persia war decked me so I had a couple of turns uh, on him so I think we just need to sort of take it easy go from province to province take out the Persian strongholdings and surrounding armies will liberate the likes of the Greeks in the north and Nicomedia and ho hopefully try and liberate the Greeks down here in Pergamon as well but I believe there is a new update I'm not going to restart the campaign to make things a little bit easier we'll just have to deal with what we're doing okay so let's get stuck into the battle so let's pull back here and uh, we'll, we'll sit further back here. So where are my reinforcements coming from exactly? Uh, they're coming from this far side. Cool. Okay, well, let's start the battle and wait for our additional reinforcements to come in. Also, someone said in the comments that Alexander can't die in this series. He sure as shit can. We've got to be incredibly careful. I, I, got, I got a message from the mod team saying he can most definitely die. But here he is. Where is he? Here he is, Alexander the Great, moving into the battlefield here now. Cool. Let's uh, set up the lines. Okay, just wait for everyone to come in, notably my pikes, and we'll try and reform them centrally where we can. A lot of you guys have said try and paint the map purple for Alexander. Well, I don't think that's going to be applicable because we really need to be able to liberate the Greek holdings because they instantly spawn a full stack which will allow us to push on. I will go back to the Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD mod. There's been a really good support on this video. And this video did really well. As, uh, the, like the Episode 1 did really well. So uh, I really appreciate all the support and uh, feedback and suggestions. Alright, just trying to reform the line here further up, get everyone up and over here. So yeah, thank you guys for all the support. I genuinely wouldn't be where I am as a YouTuber without you guys' support. So I really do appreciate it and thank you. Right, let's reform this line and get this rolling. And I'll put in the description below all the mods I'm using as well, if you guys would like to download it and uh, play along with me. Come on guys, move out. Reform the line. Okay, well, let's quickly pause and we'll give out the orders. So, we want a nice, strong line of pikemen. Let's say... Uh, hearsay. I'm more than happy with that. Okay, so then we'll put cavalry. The baggage train can sit behind further at the back here. Okay, cavalry, we shall deploy on the left and right. So, let's get our generals here. In the center, 
that's for you here as well. Also, I read some feedback in the comments as well about, in episode one, I believe in the first battle, my archers and skirmishers weren't firing and raining fire and death upon the enemy. That was due to the overlining proximity of, I had some archers like intertwined, and sometimes, I read someone saying, sometimes DEI can be a bit funny if you don't actually click on the units as well, so that's something I might have to do, I've taken that feedback in. Okay, so we want that, and then we want to have uh, a good flanking unit, so I'm trying to think, should we, should we try and flank with these guys, is this long enough for the Persian host? Hmm, because like, uh, they could buckle in that center there, so maybe going... Going something like that is probably not a bad idea, and then having the flanking units. Like, having these guys as an additional sort of frontline buffer might not be a bad idea for now. And we'll have these Thracian uh, Phalaxmen really be the, uh, the flankers, so like something like that, and then get them to go. This long front line simply make a classic SimC noob box, and we'll probably leave it like that. So we'll get everyone to reform into position. The Persians are attacking us at the end of the day, so we need to get rid of them in the front of Pergamon. We've got to get rid of them in Lydia. Uh, I believe Egypt's probably going to be sending hordes soon, and then we have the actual Persians further back. So we're reforming the line here. Alexander throwing out the commands. Let's form up. But yeah, let me know how you've gone in your campaign for this. I, I, I read that some people had a pretty rough time. Others giving me some really good feedback. But uh, I, I think we're going to be okay for this campaign. It's going to be a bit of a grind, going to be a little bit of a slog. But uh, Alexander's campaign was uh, easier said than done. So let's pull you sort of further back here with the baggage train. We don't really want this to go into combat whatsoever. Okay, we've got some Axemen here uh, that are spare. Even these guys are Axemen as well. I just saw the... the... Skirmisher out, outline and assume they were... Okay, cool. Alright, we can reform our cavalry as well. Potentially into the forest here. Okay, we're getting some line of sight as well from the Persians. That's a good sign. So, they're slowly but surely moving up some units. What have they got coming at me already? Skirmish cab. They only outnumber us by about a thousand. Nothing too crazy. They're forming up here. Okay, maybe fall you back just in case you get caught up there. Okay, keep my cavalry in the forest here. Um, if I can actually put you... You might not have a line of sight there. Okay, cool. Um, I think we'll just slow things down for a tad. Uh, we're going to have to go into phalanx mode. And probably with these guys as well. Is there some sort of formation they can deploy? No, not really. Okay, so already my skirmishers are firing over the top. And it looks like they're trying to move up some heavy melee and skirmishers. There's no way they're going to go straight into f to phalanxmen. Uh, they're going to try and... Because we've got some shorter hoplites here. Nope, they're going straight into fucking pikes, man. <laughs> Gotta respect the full-on charge, but there's no way Alexander is uh, going to let those men to rout. So they've suicided in some of their heavy cavalry. Brilliant. It does look like they've got some light cavalry over here, a bit exposed. Still holding our front line. Um, do they, they don't have line of sight. These cavalry have overextended themselves. They've been seen now double time. I don't know if we're going to be able to get there. But Alexander's cavalry deploying on the downside of the hill has exposed them. So that front-on charge hasn't worked out, and they seem to be trickling more men. They're trying to skirmish me out here a bit, and that cavalry is long gone. Okay, still keeping an eye on our pikemen, because they are skirmishing out me out a little bit here. We're getting our own shots off, which is fine. And I'm trying to... Yeah, we just can't catch the light cavalry, unfortunately. Which is a bit which is a bit of a shame. We'll form up here. I reckon these guys 
probably aren't going to be useful. So it does look like they're trying to funnel in most of their troops from the front. Oh, I'm blown away that they charged in like that. So they're already pushing men slowly but surely. Looks like there could be another pike charge straight through the front. They seem to be trying to hit the hoplites. But the rest seem to be going for the pikes themselves. They have identified a bit of a weakness there. You might get a surprise charge if you hit them or something. So we'll wait for them to rally up and centralize. And then we'll envelop them when we get the chance. I just want to wait a little bit longer for more of their forces to commit. I do need to keep an eye on my casualties because you never know if they completely focus all their skirmishes on potentially one pike unit. You never know. But the Persians seem to be committing against our front. We've got them on the back foot here. We're sitting on the defense. We have all the advantage our way and they're slowly but surely pushing into us. We just need to keep an eye on our pikes because even them have lost we're about 10, 20, 15% of their total unit. Okay, they seem to be moving something out here. These seem to be melee... Medium melee infantry, which is a bit insane. They're trying to pull this cavalry away. Okay, I just want to wait a little bit longer. I'll fall these guys further back. Okay, so... Oh, okay. So we're starting to get to the point now, as you can see, that my pikes are getting a little bit damaged. So what I'm going to do is... Hmm. What have we got here on the flank? Pikes. I think we should just throw everyone else in here. Like, just get these guys, right, to absolutely haul ass around the back there. Go like this. And on this side, it seems to be a little bit different, right? So we'll go with something like this and we'll invert it a bit so go something like that so swing where you can we'll get my cavalry that are hiding in the forest here what's further at the back swordsman by the look of it if you could somehow like hit these arches that'd be good they haven't got too many isolated by the look of them what I could do is send one unit of swordsmen just to pin these guys down then I'll be able to pull here Alexander's under attack is he uh, that's not good. We probably need to pull him back, pull them back slightly. Because they seem to be targeting someone. So pull them further back. Yeah, it looks like they did go for it. Shit, because I can't afford to lose Alexander or Hephaestion, because they are mortal in this. Okay, All right. We've got one sword unit engaging there. And we'll now, even though the flank is coming on, we'll try and pin this cavalry unit for the front, for there. So, Alexander sounded the charge. Charge! For freedom, for democracy, and Greek pleasure! <laughs> right, we should be able to absolutely rout these Persian scallywags. Right, that's good. Okay, let's slow things down a bit here because we need to commit around the back. So, everyone's getting into their good positions. You just need to stake a claim into this where you can. So, make sure you're properly flanking around the back. Uh, I've got some of my cavalry. Oh, it's okay to charge that if you want, but you've just got to be prepared to go here. Okay, that's now been taken as well. So, let's swing you further around the back and try and get you higher up this way. Okay, so we should be able to have a an amazing encirclement. We've pulled back Alexander out of skirmish fire, and we'll try and get everyone here around the back. Perfect. Okay, you for some reason, even though I gave you all those orders, are not swinging around like this. Good. Okay, so we still seem to be hitting. We seem to be hitting their heavier cavalry here now, which is giving us a little bit of a run for our money. Okay, the enemy general is dead. Huzzah! That's going to give us a massive morale boost now going into the final minutes of this. And we'll try and surround. So this is basically the way you've got to do it. You've got to force them into an attack. And look, the thing is with pikes, if you can sit back, relax, rain fire and death upon the enemy, flank with superior cavalry, you've got them. But to be fair, the Persians here are trying to not allow us to get a footing. They attacked us for some reason. But if we had to attack this, if we were to aggressively push it, I don't know how we would, how well we would go in the reversal. To be fair, pikes are really good 
uh, in DEI, especially with the Greek bonuses. But the thing is, right, if you can get some Thracian Barbarian Warriors just to sweeten the ranks, it's mwah! Bon Appetito, motherfucker. It's beautiful. That's, a, that's Italian, not Greek. <laughs> but whatever. The men are wavering. I'm sure some of the pikes are in the center. Like some in the very center. Alright, push down here. Alright, we are surrounding them where we can. How are we going cavalry wise? Okay, they seem to be running down some of the remaining stragglers. And it does look like they are putting in some more troops. Maybe there was a bit of a limit there. Okay. How well are my cavalry going? What are you engaging? That's fine. Swing around you down here to help. And continue to be on the flanking aggressive where you can. Okay, good. So this is a good victory for us. We're going to wipe out three stacks here. Uh, we managed to defeat per the Thracians in episode one. And if we can essentially take... Pergamon here now. They're skirmishing me out a bit here. We've got to be careful about that. Because now those units have come in. It's going to expose them. Right. Continue to flank and push where you can. I don't think we're going to need Alexander to come into this one. We kind of risked him in another fight along with Hephaestion. So, we're doing well against the Persians here. We have the Thracian Phalaxmen pushing through it. Allow the Barbarians to do most of the fighting and the dying. Alright, let's push through here. The enemy general's dead again. Okay, cool. So, fall here. Make sure you're out of the way and in out of trouble. You push here as well. Okay, so there still seems to be some remaining stragglers that seem to be holding. God, they are really trying to push through there as well. Man, some of those pikes held firm. Okay, uh, I guess we just push up. Push up now. Give some added pressure. Okay, I think what's... Oh, okay, they're... Fuck, they're really trickling in more men here now. I guess that they couldn't deploy everyone in just yet. I think that's what's going on. So this could be a bit of a concern if we caught flat-footed here. Which we are on that side. Quickly turn. Turn. Turn and face them. Oh my god. What a heroic charge against the Persians there. Okay. And what we need to do essentially. If. I don't know if they can move out of pike formation. But they should be able to move. Shouldn't they? Yeah. Yeah. What you need to do is essentially make the front line here. The new front line. Just move it up. A couple yards just to help out the boys. Speaking of the boys, I need to watch that. Apparently that's good. The new TV show. Alright. Let's push this. They're skirmishing us out here. Yeah, so what do they actually bring in? Medium spears. We'll be right. We just need to reform the line. The battle is turning in our favour. Has it not been in our favour? <laughs> when is it not? Maybe the star numerically. Right, let's try and speed things up a bit. We've got them on the ropes here now. They ain't coming back from this. Oh, some of my... Oh, they've been caught there. Some of the cavalry's been caught there. Alright, fall back. Alrighty, a lot of these melee units need to move up. Right, move up. Another enemy general has been slain. God, I've actually underestimated a lot of their guys at the back there. Because they've done alright. Right, let's reform and push up where we can, make a nice strong long front line. And continue to push. Mm, those light missile cav are fresh and hungry. Right, I'm gonna get these guys. I need to get these guys out of pike formation because they're really slowed down here. Right. Uh, 
get you here. Get you boys like here. Oh, a lot of them are routing, eh? Look at that shit. Just because you're getting skirmished the fuck out. Alright, try and go for something of these. We might need Alexander in now, thinking about it. Just for that additional support. Oh, Christ. Yeah, swing in here. I think we're just getting skirmished out. I really think that's all that's it. Because they've got, like, fresh troops here now. Fighting us, and we're not doing too good. Right, come around the back. We'll get some hammer and anvil charges. We'll allow... We'll allow Hephaestion and Alexander to engage that. And we'll try and get around some of these lighter skirmishes here. Right, try and envelop this way, please. God, I'm surprised they were routing a bit. Yeah, most of the Thracian swordsmen are gone here. Wow, hey. I thought we had things wrapped up. I thought she was easy peasy lemon squeezy. But, DEI, you can't let it rest for a fucking second. Alright, try and get this stuff around the back done. Alright, come, come down in here, please. Alright, there we go. Okay, we're starting to... It's a little bit back and forth in this. Because that's what you can do. If you overextend this sort of funnel you create, it can be a bit of an issue. Right, we're going to get a good charge in here now, though. Run down the skirmishes. For Alexandra! For a free and independent Greece! Run them down. That's perfect, guys. Huzzah! Cut them to pieces! Holy shit! <laughs> Imagine getting decapitated by a fucking blunt stick. <laughs> Not like the edge of the spear. The fucking wooden bit. Jesus Christ, man. Okay. Alright, let's swing down and help. Let's get the boys down here. Alexander. Yep, swing here. Yep, yep, yep. And let's speed things up now. We got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Alright, push there. Let's get one last final charge with the Macedonian cavalry. Boom. I'm curious to see my casualties after that. Victory! We have victory. Okay, cool. Cool beans. C -c -c cool beans. Right, let's speed things up. Um, try and pick an enemy unit where you can. But look at the carnage. Look at the devastation. So, most of the Persians fell on the front line. They seem to hold off this flank here. But, um, they killed a lot of us here in this center bit. We've done well here today. A little bit shaky. But, it's what is this? Episode 3? So, we're not even like 20 turns into our campaign, I don't reckon. It's still incredibly early days for Alexander the Great. Didn't he conquer it in 10 or 8 years or something? He conquered the world when he was 28. I don't I can do the same. Probably not. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> like, that achievement is crazy. The only other people I can think of that conquered the world when they were 28 is maybe, I don't know, Lex Luthor? Maybe. <laughs> oh, God. I think there's a whole thing, isn't there, about Lex Luthor admiring Alexander. <laughs> oh, because um, Lex is short for Alexander. Right. Let's continue where we can and run them down. Yeah, so looking at... So some of the phalanx men there, the medium melees, got a bit caught towards the end. We pushed the spearmen to the limit, the barbed spearmen. Skirmishes did all right. We lost a couple of pike units here and there, but most of them managed to hold on. And we've des destroyed... How many stacks in and around Pergamon? This must be three. What do we do? Two and a half in the last episode? I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. Right. We can't see them. I kind of wish I could see with the enemy a bit easier, but they seem to be avoiding me. Right. Let's call it there. Let's call it quits. Let's end the battle. A close victory, supposedly. Okay. So we deployed 7,432. We lost 3,000. I don't think that's too bad to be perfectly honest. They deployed 8,315, and they lost 7,400 upon the field of battle. Right. 
looking at Hephaestion's army, we pushed them to the limit. Boop, boop, boop. Push it to the limit. Right, 400 there, uh, 300 there as well. 469, yeah, look at that, man. We really gave it to them. Spearmen didn't do too well. 107, 125. Skirmishes did well. Uh, 214, 28. And how did the Persians go? Okay, so those cavalry charges, strength of the ranks were shit. Um, their, their axemen... Didn't do too well either. Spearman did all right. I didn't. Oh, one unit did. This didn't do very well. Oh, some slingers that were just having a crack at us. 128, 185. The thing is, like, to beat us, what the Persians need to do, like, what our major weakness is, it's just javcav. Get a bunch of javcav skirmishes, right? And you just sort of just rain fire and death upon my my pikes and you can basically isolate the rest of my infantry but they're not going to do that you'd basically make whatever the you'd basically make whatever the hardest infantry you could find four or five units of them that's all you need a bunch of heavy cavalry a bunch of heavy skirmishes and they'd fucking smash us i reckon but building the sloppy mess of persian rabble isn't the best but at the, to be honest we're, we're only fighting the uh, a puppet of the Persians. But this is what we're probably going to expect for this series. I don't think we're... We're close enough just yet. For the actual heart of the Persians. The immortals that fought Leonidas. Um, they're not coming for quite some time. They haven't had any beasts either. Elephants. Uh, camels or something. Okay guys, welcome... To the campaign map. So, we've managed to defeat the Persians here today near Pergamon. Okay, so close victory supposedly. Okay, only 914 of them remaining. So, we lost one unit of Thracian warriors, one unit of spearmen, two units there, and one unit of pikes. The others got incredibly low, so it's not too bad if I do say so myself. Do say so myself. One, two, three. So, four armies in total, about three and a half, uh, two and a half stacks rather. Okay, well, we're going to straight up kill the captives and leave none alive. Okay, that army's now fled back. That's gone there as well. And we're just outside Pergamon. Okay, how are they going to play this one out of my own curiosity? Are they going to send any more units further north? No. Oh, but we've been attacked here by one army just outside Athens. My, my fleet's been caught there by an actual fleet. And I believe this is an Egyptian army as well. Right, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to retreat further back. And I wonder if they'll give chase. That was it. I remember at the top of last time I sent this out to try and intercept an army heading to Athens. I thought sinking it might work. Okay, so it looks like the Persians there haven't given chase. Oh, but another Egyptian army's come up here. The one outside Athens hasn't been caught. Alright, let's just chuck a quick save over that fight. Right, well, um, what are the odds on this? It's actually not too bad going for an aggressive. Because we are an admiral at the end of the day. We should be able... You'd, you'd think that, like, we'd be smashing these... These cargo ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a proper navy can smash an army in the open sea because they're just transport ships at the end of the day cool let's kill the enemy captives and we've destroyed a full stack of egyptians but already the persian armies are descending upon us the italian peninsula and greek uh huzzah child's been born military sabotage right in the capital okay Alrighty then, welcome to the campaign map. Okay, so we took this episode in the north. We took this settlement, yep, in the north. Ionian Greeks. So there seems to be two armies left there. 
Okay, my, my navy's done all right there. I need to get you back to Athens. That's what I really need you to do and replenish. So we've managed to bypass the Persian navy here. And it does look like the Egyptian state is there. Sure leave. When navies or armies are docked, they'll, they'll decrease public order of a province on the following basis. Your current navy will detract 15 public order from this province. Really? Um... Okay, well, we need to stay here so we can replenish. We're currently at 90, so the public order should be fine for now. Okay, now, I did identify another threat. There's another Persian here, because what we're going to be careful of is armies coming through to um, Odysseus. I think I called this Odessa in the last episode. Uh, at Apollonia. So, so Apollo, a Apollonia, Apollonia. Apollonia. Okay, right, that's how you say it. Uh, and we've also got to defend in the south here. So, I'm going to move this army from Philippopolis. And we'll move it here to defend these regions, because they can get attacked within one turn. Okay, I've got you here as well. We need a secondary army. So, what do I want from you? Getting some phalaxmen early on. Seriously, not a bad shout. And then probably skirmishes are really low-key underrated in this mod. So let's get a couple of those boys in. And we'll try and swing them down to actually... So what? So what's the zone of control? Pella, Larissa... Uh, there are. So if I move you out a bit actually... If I move you to Larissa, can you recruit those units? Yep. I'll push you to the border here now then. Yep, and you can still get them. Cool. I assumed as much, but DI's got weird recruitment. So you never know. Cool. Leave that there. Alright, sweet. Okay, so the south here in Greece is secure for now. And up in the north. The thing is, I think we're going to be alright for this campaign. If we take it slow, isolate the enemy where we can. We've got a really good foundation here. And I think diplomacy-wise, we're quite set as well. I might dive into that again. Do they want peace? Do they, do they want peace? Would they even want it? No. But looking at these guys, we already outnumbered them with our armies. So, that's alright. Okay, so we just need to make sure we defend Athens and Thrace closely from these two points down here as well. Pella might be alright, but it could be a bit ambitious if they push up through there. Also, the uh, barbarian tribes in the north. That's what happens. It's when you get sort of massively war decked and you're fighting on multiple fronts. It complicates things. Okay, let's uh, deal with our frontier in Pergamon. So what's our best thing to do here? Alexander's fine. He can actually attack in one turn. I'm trying to think which one we should go for. Go for this one or should we go and try and siege this city out straight away? Like if you go for this, like what are you actually fighting? Go for a night attack. You can actually just run them down massively and then allow Alexander to go for it. Right. So let's run these guys down then. Okay. Now, if I get Alexander to hit that, it's going to draw out the garrison. Do I want that? Or should I just try and mop up everyone else out here? That's what I'm sort of thinking. Like, just... Oh, that's going to make them go around the back. So, if Alexander goes for this right... Oh, we're going to be able to win it. We outnumber them quite significantly, even with those guys at the back. Alright, let's sort of resolve this one out then. And uh, we'll take Pergamon... For Greece. Whoa! Oh, God, I hate the auto resolve in this game. <laughs> God damn it. We lost two units of cavalry. Tier 3 as well. Ah, oh, buggier. All right. So we've got a couple of options here. Even though I like the notion of painting the map, our color, painting it a purple or blue. Um, I think liberation is the smartest idea for us. First up, we don't have to deal with the public order itself. Uh, do we even get a finance thing? No, but essentially what it does, it spawns a full free stack to defend. And I think that's worth to us, uh, to us rather than actually trying to hold and, and take this. We might take a couple of territories here and there, the ones that we can actually hold and have it as a basically forward operating base. 
But especially early on, seeing as we're so outnumbered, we'll we'll, we'll start liberating now. So we're going to liber- re- liberate the city of Pergamon. And I would imagine that Pergamon's probably going to be back. Yep, Pergamon is here now. As you can see, they have a full stack of 16 units. And they have the garrison. So that's in its own region, is it? It is too. I just like naturally progressing down through this way. Okay, cool. So Pergamon is now back. They are now our military allies. And they have a full stack here as well. Okay, well, unfortunately, guys, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching episode 3 of the Alexander the Great campaign. So yeah, guys, stay tuned for episode 4 in the near future. I think we'll have to continue what we do, try and fight and isolate the forces to hit us, like we've done here in the north with the Ionian Greeks, and down here in Pergamon as well. We'll continue our expansion further south and try and throw back the uh, hordes of Persia and try and do sort of similar tactics and uh, whatnot while defending our homeland. Unfortunately, guys, it is time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comment section down below your feedback for the series. And if you'd like to see more, that's the best way to ensure more content. Leave a dislike if you're not enjoying the series. Check out my social media links if you want to stay connected with me. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all in the description below. Highly recommend Twitter. Every single time I post a video, a tweet goes out. It's much more reliable than the YouTube sub box. These days, to get all the notifications for the channel, you have to click the bell, of course, to join the notification squad. I do enjoy reading those comments. Patreon and merchandise link in the description below, along with the Steam group. Come and join the community on Steam. And on that note, unfortunately, I have to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching once again. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Go out and have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simsy. Goodbye.